welcome to the haunted house. Good, right? Yeah. God's good. 
And look at these two right here. Peter and Yvette. Man, yeah. a lot of these. Woo! They are your friends that haven't been. It's been, it seems like it's been yesterday, but the first thing Peter said to me is that, boy, you guys built a beautiful building here. And I'm going, has it been that long? It doesn't seem like it. And you've been it's in Italy a lot, <laughs> even though you're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> but that's wonderful. So glad you guys are back. Boy, did you want to be I know back. Marty is so tickled to see you, that's for sure. So, uh, and we got a couple of new guests over here. Boy, I'll tell you, Medora booked them in, and uh, we hope that, uh, oh yeah, she puts out the, uh, she, she puts the hook in you. You don't, you don't have a chance once the net goes over you. You know, you gotta go. Or you're in the, you either go or you're in a big guilt trip. So, <laughs> get it over tonight. But at any rate, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, Rosa, and I saw Rosa just the other day. Uh, we met, and uh, I was uh, I had to officiate a, uh, a memorial service, and Rosa was there, and she uh, uh, decided to stay. Didn't know the family, and uh, she was actually going with another the reason. She was here for another reason, but uh, she decided to hang out. What a blessing that was! I just I just wanted to see how they do that here, the service here, because I was the funeral director in Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. I just wanted to see and, and, and say hi to the family. Oh, that was wonderful. Well, um, uh, if I'm doing it, it's probably different than anywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> I, took, I took a couple of chances with the family there, as you know. But uh, they loved it. They loved what I did. So uh, that worked out well. For and um, OK, so we're good to go. Where's Mark? Mark is uh, not feeling well. Oh, he's not. So he's coming in. Oh, terrific. Don't anybody tell him we didn't hang on the prayer list. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, that's great that he's going to be able to make it tomorrow. Now, this song that I'm going to play, it, it, it touches me, and I, I get it, you know, sometimes when I play this thing. Uh, because I don't think that there's a better rep, a representation of what war is all about than this song by... Tim McGraw, and the title of the song is, you may know it, the title of the song is, if you're reading this, I'm already home. One second.
All right, anybody else? Everybody got one? Everybody got one? Do you just want to share? Okay, you're welcome to do that. And then if you change your mind, you know, the next couple of weeks, you both want one, I'll make the other one. Oh, here's one. I got it. Okay. Now, if you'll notice, one thing I want you to know is the this, the, the thing I made up to go in here, listen to me, that I made up, that Amy made up, <laughs> the, the one in here, it tends to slide around a little bit, so you can take that down, you can get a little, I know some people will take it out and they'll take like scotch tape, you know how they put it in the circle, put it in and they'll, so it can't be seen more, I'm, I'm old fashioned, I just take a piece of tape and stick it right across the <laughs> But it will move around a little bit, but that's okay. Like I said, you can tape it to it or whatever you want to do with that to, uh, uh, to make sure it stays in place. Okay. You feel like you're in college now? Did you bring punch? Did I bring what? Uh, no idea. I can bring that next week. Because you'll love it. It's electric. We'll have one here. We'll have one here next week. So your previous lesson, dating back to what, five, six years? Yeah. I think we should give a prize for anybody that has the little three ring binders and the message notes from the tiny church. Do you really? Oh, um, she has one. No, you're right. I'm serious. I can probably sell it. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we're, we're continuing to study godly living, love of God. Amen. And uh, what we want to do is uh, we're going to end this series up, by the way, next week. And uh, uh, we've been talking about different. We're, what we're basically talking about is the love of God. And if you recall, uh, I say this about every week, but if you remember, I was saying, what's God's nature? Uh, love. love. <coughs> God does not know anything but love. Wouldn't you just love to be married to somebody like that? Oh, yeah. And he or she doesn't know anything but love. No matter what you do, how you do it, when you do it, where you do it, how bad you mess up, how much of a snaker you were, or whatever. I love you. Wonderful. You better put the, you better put the number on that. That's a keeper. That's rare. <laughs> so the point then is, is that is what we, that's the God that we serve. Uh, and now we're going to talk about flee and pursue. Now who's the time? You guys want some young time? Okay, good luck. They always do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I, only, I always ignore them. <laughs> they put up the food bill last week. They got me when they put food. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's read 1 Timothy chapter 6, 3 through, it's not 3 through 11, it's 3 through 6, and then we jump to the 11th verse. So who would like to do that? Dorian got it? Okay, you can do that. And you want me to read it here or you want me to read it out of my Bible? Well, uh, this one here is the New King Jimmy. If you prefer your Bible, whichever you're more comfortable with. Okay, well, I uh, I like to read out of the NIV if I can first. Absolutely. So you want me to read it from 6 from mm -hmm. uh, 3 and 6 and then skip to 11? 3 through 6 and then 11. Okay. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the godly teaching, he is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godly, godless, godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, according to verse 3 of this passage, as you see there, it is the doctrine, according to godliness, that we are to blank and blank. Verse 3. 
See if you can find those two words I'm looking for. Who said what? Teach and consent. Teach and consent. Very good. That's it. Ross, you got that piece down too. Very good. Did you say teach? Yeah. Well, you said both. I just heard the first one. Hi. What did I hear from? <laughs> okay, teach and consent. According to verse 3, it is the doctrine according to godliness we are to teach and consent to. Now, I want you to underline the bold which is according to godliness. That verse starts out, verse 4, or excuse me, in verse 3, and to, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Now, what is Paul saying? I want to drill down on this a little bit just to make sure we get it. I don't want to just fly by this one. Uh, and we, so I want to make sure that we get this. He's saying, which is according to godliness. What is godliness? Probably the most Probably the best compliment that anyone could get in their life, no matter how much you serve the church, no matter how much you spend in the parking lot or you're doing the nursing job or you're whatever you might be doing, no matter how much a pastor, and I'm not talking to me, I'm talking to big guys. Uh, to be considered God. That's the best compliment that you can possibly have if somebody wouldn't, if you should, it hit me that I, you know, if 20 years from now somebody were to bring up my name, I would hope that they might say he was a godly man. Okay. I'm not there yet. You would be being kind. You're pretty close. But, <laughs> but, and wouldn't that be, that's your ultimate compliment. Yes. Madora was a godly woman. And I'm, I'm getting it. Yeah. That's the legacy. That's the whole thing about the gospel, the legacy that you leave. That's you know your testimony. Yeah. The legacy that you leave after you know for what people remember about you. That's correct. But how many people can you truly say? I bet you can't count them on one hand. That's a godly person. Because remember when we talked two or three weeks ago when we delved into this lesson. Remember we talked about believers have to what? To become holy. They choose. And so I challenged us all. I said, I don't care when you accepted Christ as your personal Savior. When you made that decision and you invited him into your heart, and the, the Holy Spirit showed up and now he took over. And he's in you and he's alive. But a believer still has to choose to be holy. Doesn't, you just don't become holy. You got to choose that. So the question was, if you remember, I said, have you made that choice yet? Have you made the choice to say to yourself and to God Almighty, today I choose to be holy? That's your first step for Godliness. Because they're together. You can't have holiness here and godliness here. It's that's the same. That's when you you you're <coughs> You're really elevated in God's eyes. So that's what this verse is saying. That uh, most of them, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to Godliness. Now we started to talk a little bit last week. I want to just spend a few minutes on this. In uh, fact, Brother Stu brought up. He says, "Well, what doctrine? What does doctrine mean?" Doctrine actually means your belief system. So what's the doctrine that this that Paul's talking about? Is he talking about the Mormons? Is he talking about the Baptist? Is he talking about the Presbyterians? The Methodists? The Muslims? The Jehovah Witness? The doctrine of God, not of men. Right. Amen. Amen. And that's where Stu was trying to 
want me to point out last week. He says, I still want to talk to you about Newton Young. And you still haven't gotten there. And uh, <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have to notice too, you know, when I haven't done my job yet, he lets me know it after class. And, uh, but, uh, but at any rate, so please understand that very good, Matt. That's exactly what we're talking about, is the truth of what this Bible teaches. And here's what happens too many times. Remember we talked about how the message gets confusing? We have too many churches today that like to teach that or preach that feel-good religion. You know? I read about a, uh, uh, Linda says it surprised me, it's in California, it's a California church, and they like smoke marijuana. You go to that church, first thing you do is light up a joint. <laughs> and the pastor believes in that. And what figured, I don't that? know, he must be yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the only good thing I can say about it. It hasn't been growing much. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> But they're they're doing uh, they're they're doing I mean uh, different things. They're trying to become innovative, uh, uh, you know, in different things. Uh, the drive through or the drive by church and uh, or funerals and uh, anything we can make it quicker, faster, easier, feel good. Man, I know I'm good. What false teaching? And that's why it keeps telling us that we have. Uh, who's getting kicked out of here? <laughs> 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 So and that's what we do. We just want to. We want to feel good. We like the, you know, the music. It gets us so good. It gets a spirit that's flowing. And, man, alive. And and then sometimes the pastor comes out and it's a letdown. I mean, the music and the spirit. That's what's beautiful about the music. Because the music is worship music. And it helps. It's like priming the pump. Man, I'm primed. I'm ready to go. And then you have the pastor coming out and well. We're going to read Psalm 44. And if you plod, you're in trouble. Yeah. So, and they're just so, the church is dead. Or the other side of the coin is, the other side of the coin is that uh, it's so feel-goodish that the scripture is being watered down. And it's, it's, you really don't get it. And that's why when you go to a good church, one like this one, and there's many like this one that teach about, all about Jesus and His Word, and you get in one of those churches, you're, you're, you're in God's arms. And that is so important because um, have you studied something before? And you studied it a few times, maybe you heard the preacher preach on it, and then all of a sudden you went to Sunday school or you went to, to a church and the, the pastor teaches on it. And it's like the dots just connected. And you wonder, why didn't they make it that simple before? I didn't know that. I wasn't understanding that. And, and that's why we have so many different <coughs> Bibles. Mine's the home that I use. I actually teach and I do a lot of study out of the New King James. But the, the, you guys got me spoiled. The letters are so big. I, I love it. You can read it from there. Anybody want to read it? <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, the, uh, okay. So I just wanted to make sure that we understood what godliness is. That's the ultimate, ultimate. Buddy, if somebody will say that you're a godly person, man, you know, you've got to be very careful. Because you couldn't get there if you're up on that stool that Corey was talking about, Pastor Corey. The higher you go, the lower you are. Uh, okay, true or false? There are many other doctrines floating around that are not according to the doctrine or teaching of the Word of God. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's true. All right, this brings us to 1 Timothy 6.11. You got it right there above you. There are some things we are to flee from. They're found in verses 4 and 5. What does it say? He's proud knowing nothing. 
but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which comes envy, strife, reveling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, to suppose that godliness is a means of personal gain. All right, so there are some things we're supposed to flee from. These are some of them that's right there laid out for you in verse 4 and 5. There is an action we are to be involved in concerning those who feel that the Christian life of godliness is lived so that they can have blank, blank. Personal gain. That's right, personal gain. Personal, I, I put personal benefit because I just like to trick myself. Uh, but it's personal gain. We are to flee from certain things, withdraw from certain people, and pursue certain what qualities? Godliness. Godliness. But let's, I'm looking for another word here, actually. But it's got to do with godliness. Who said, who said spiritual? Personal. Very good. It's spiritual. Spiritual qualities. Because I would think in order to be godly, you're going to have to be spiritual first. Then you're going to start climbing that ladder. Make sense? Okay. Even though the spiritual qualities found in 1 Timothy 6.11 are separate items, they are parts of a whole. The blank mentioned here is agape love. Love. Very good. The love mentioned here is agape love. Now we talked about agape love before. It's a Greek word. What is agape love? Unconditional. 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 That's good. It's God. Godly love. Godly love. Absolutely. Yes. Pardon me. Yes. Pure love. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You rang the bell, but you're all you're all around. It. The agape love is a sacrificing. Love. That's it. It's sacrificial. It's when you love somebody and don't expect anything back. That's agape love. You're right. It's godliness. Somebody over here said uh, spiritual. Absolutely. It's all of these things. But the most important thing is, and that's why God loves you sacrificially, that he gave his son. Are you worth it? He finds a person a good dog. I'm up on the stool. <laughs> no, but seriously, we're not worth it. Man, that is, so that's what agape love is. And that, I, if we just want to reduce it to the, to the lowest denomination, it's sacrificial love. Giving, not expecting a thing back. It's a little bit like your family. If you loan them a hundred bucks, don't expect it back. <laughs> and then you can just tell them, well, that's agape love, son. <laughs> but seriously, can you do that? It's not easy. And agape love is found in a very special place in the scriptures, and we're getting to it. The last sentence there, all of these qualities are a part of the whole or the complete life in Christ. Christ. Very good. Now, if we go back to the top in the NIV, or excuse me, the, King James, the New King James, righteousness, godliness, faith, <coughs> love, patience, gentleness, what's that remind you of? <laughs> Fruit of the Spirit. Are we getting closer to agape love? That's what that is. Sacrificial. Righteousness. Godliness. Faith. Love. Patience. Gentleness. And we're going to cover the rest up here in a minute. But we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Here's one example. The fruit of the Spirit contains individual items, but what those items make up? Together. But all, what? All. All. 
together. I put together, but as you're right, it's the same thing. All. Those items make up the fruit of the Spirit. Now, there's a few talks to bear, but there's a few more that we haven't touched on yet. We'll get to those. So, true or false? Any one item in the fruit of the Spirit can constitute the fruit of the Spirit. True. False. False. If you take one fruit of the Spirit out, see, it doesn't say the fruits of the Spirit. Let's go to Galatians. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And I believe Ricardo, you wanted to read? Okay. Galatians 5, we'll wait till everybody gets there. It's in the New Testament. Who wrote Galatians? Paul. Paul wrote Galatians. Galatians 5, I should do it myself. 22 through 25. Yeah, 5, 22 through 25. Okay, you got it. Everybody ready to go? Hold on. This is her verse. You want to do it? You want to say that? Okay. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I was asking that. This is her verse. You should say that. Can I do it? No. Never mind. All right. Can I drive you? Hey. Emily. 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 Em
So that's one of them. Love. Go ahead. Joy. Joy. Now, let's let's we can talk about joy just for one minute. I got how many minutes? Five minutes. So I'm gonna take less than one minute. What's the difference between joy and happiness? Happiness is sleep. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Happiness depends on outside of circumstances. Joy is that's good. It's temporal. It's temporary. That's exactly right. If I gave somebody, let's say I had a hundred bucks, and I gave it to you, you go, wow, I'm happy. And then she took it from you, wow, I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she would do that. <laughs> right? So it's temporary. Happiness is just joy. This joy, this gift, this fruit of the Spirit is a joy that's within you and comes from you from the Holy Spirit. You have a joy and a peace about yourself that's unbelievable. Nothing can shake it. Nothing can shake it. So we could go on, but we're obviously our time is not allowing us to. But that's the fruit of the Spirit, and that's a God may love. Can you love sacrificially? I know people that can't even open the door for a lady, and they're offended if they don't say thank you. I wanted to say in a marriage, sometimes you find yourself giving 110% and he's giving 40, but you don't complain, and you just keep giving, even if it's 140, you just keep giving because of your love, yeah. and you don't measure, or you don't measure it, you actually don't measure it, and you don't complain or anything, you just accept it and do or give as in the marriage, as you will. And, and a marriage suffers everything. That's right. You know, when you go into that, and that's a good point, but what happens is, is the flesh takes over, right? And we want something back. So and then sometimes we even start keeping score. Mm -hmm. Well, last week I did this for you. You won't even take the garbage out. <laughs> You are right. My mom is right. You are a bum. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I knew I should have went with Clarence. He just he wasn't as good looking, and then I fell for it. <laughs> what about on the other side? <laughs> the other side. That's true. That's true. Um, should have gone with Betsy. I uh, go all the way down. Okay, we'll get uh, we'll get it. Emily will go back there like a. Okay, all right. And let's finish up with Ephesians, chapter five, eight, nine, and ten. Moses, you got it. All right, just give everybody a minute. Let's go to Ephesians. Who wrote Ephesians? Are you in shock? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Ephesians, are we there? Are we good? I don't see anybody saying no. We're good to go? Oh, wait a second. Are you there, honey? Good. Ephesians, okay. Chapter 5, 8 through 10. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and and find out what pleases the Lord. Very good. Read that one more time. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Yeah. Good stuff. You are light. Once you were dark. What's that saying? Once I was lost. Now I am saved. The light's on in my house. And hopefully you see it. If you don't see it, ask me about it. You okay, Larry? Something wrong? That's what we should be doing with each other. If we're going to claim being a Christ follower, our light should be on. We should be saying, how are you doing? We should have a smile on our face. We're living for Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be... Well, let me tell you, life's tough. It's a, it's rough out there. Got a minute I can tell you about it? <laughs> <laughs> Remember what, what pastor did that? There was a 
uh, oh, it was uh, our visiting pastor. Remember he said you want to run away from them people when you see them yeah. coming? They go, oh my gosh. And uh, uh, so at any rate, this is good stuff. We're going to finish up next week with, uh, did you find it? Where is it? <coughs> okay. Okay. That's why you'll notice I spend a lot of time on my knees underneath the bleachers. <laughs> You'd be surprised what I collect. <laughs> we think you're being I'm still trying to figure out who brought the pipe in, though. <laughs> and then I found a flask back there one time. So, <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, here's the deal. We're going to finish up this series next week as I talked about. We're going to talk about, uh, uh, we're going to continue talking about this and flee and pursue and, and uh, uh, being, being knowledgeable. Now, if somebody, if they're the description in four and five, if you know somebody like this, uh, he's proud, knowing nothing, uh, strife, reveling, that's the bragging, evil suspicions, uh, useless wranglings of men or corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, they, they love lying, they love fables, that if they can mess you up, they're going to. One thing that I, I think that we can stand on, I don't think that you, that person at the same time can say, but I'm a Christian, and I can do that. They're fooling themselves. I would ask them, what church did you belong to before? Was it at Disney World? Was Mickey the pastor? <laughs> I love this guy. Oh man. So the point being is that's where we are. All right. Uh, we're going to finish up, and before I do, we're going to finish up with. Uh, now we want to we want to recognize our veterans. Don, you come on down here. I know you're the veteran of Navy guy. Come on down. Come on down. Anybody up? Read? Come on down. 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 He's just standing. He's just standing in salute already. Very good. Okay. Uh, were you in the service? Okay. Anybody else in the service? I don't want me to miss anybody. Anybody in the service? Okay. Do you have someone in your family that's in the service? Yeah. Ben, come on down. Okay, come on. Stand up then. Stand up and tramp. Okay. And then we, uh, you were yawning. I'm trying to get you woke up. <laughs> Moses, are you in the service? Family? Who? Good. You're representing him. See, whoever you have in your family, you're representing your family. That's why you're here. Come on down. If you have somebody, come here because you're representing that family member. Okay? All right, come on down. Okay. They're serving uh, great service now. Uh, guy, come on over. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Okay. All right. Real quickly, what's, for what branch? I have a brother in the Air Force, another one is a lieutenant colonel in the Army. Army Air Force. Nieces and nephews in the Navy. And Man, you've got a whole family going out. Wow. I don't feel bad about being there. So that's cool. That's wonderful. God bless them. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. A brother in uh, Air Force, a brother in Army. Uh, my niece. Okay. So we know right yes. off the bat where your prayers are going to be at. Are they in battle? Are they in No, they're not. Okay. Air Force. Air Force. Navy. Navy. We've got a couple Navy guys over here. Navy, I served on the Constitution. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the Constitution. <laughs> Navy, I served on the Rangers. The Rangers, okay. Yeah. God. Navy. Moses, your family. Three in the Army and one in the Navy. Three in the Army and one in the Navy. God bless them. Robert. My father, Army. Father, Army. Granddad. Right? <coughs> Oh, really? No, which one? Army. 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 
Okay. Two in the Army, one in the Marine. Two in the Army, one in the Marine. We finally got a Marine in the house. My dad was in the Navy and both my brother and sister were in the Army. Wonderful. Brother and sister. Yeah. Terrific. I have enough of us starting now. You didn't know that. Good job. Oh, we have enough of us. All of them. Good. My uncle got a Purple Heart. I wasn't thinking about like extended family. Well, you down to represent if you no, want. No, okay, you don't think that much I of it. <laughs> <laughs> a nephew, very good. What branch? Uh, uh, so <laughs> well, my dad was actually, now that Karen mentioned, my father has a purple heart, so I have that. Oh, I have that. Put the Jewish guild on it. How do you like that? <laughs> but I do have the purple heart. Purple hearts and that. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. I Anybody else? My, uh, my brother and my, uh, my stepdad. My brother stepdad. Uh, you know. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Don. Uh, my stepfather was in the Navy and my brother is in the Navy. Wonderful. They just went to visit him, too. And then, yeah. Come on down. You're representing them. Wonderful. Good stuff. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I have one more. Oh, okay. My grandfather on my mom's side was in the Navy. He got a <coughs> five, but he was in the Navy. Oh, good stuff. All right. Well, we're going to, we're going to, you remember the, do you remember the, uh, the, the group Kiss? Yeah. Who was the lead singer? Gene Simmons. Gene Simmons. So let's crank it, and you guys can turn around and watch this. This is, uh, this is special stuff. Let's go! Yes!
I, I wanted to share the definition of godly love. And godly living means living in the manner that God wants us to live. It means having the same feelings, attitude, and heart's desires that God has. It means that we love the things that God loves, care for the things that God loves, cares for, and dislike those things which He dislikes. Like it was said in verse 4 and 5. And we all know He dislikes sin, so if you're with people or you're around people and you family, whatever it is, you, you, you've got to, I think, what you were just saying, or love on even more. Don't let sin win. And since God loves righteousness, a godly person also loves righteousness. Since God hates sin, a godly person also hates sin, whether it is his own life or another's. A godly person will seek to abandon every sin in his life. Since God, that's what we're talking about choosing. Do I want to choose to be holy? And when I do that, I, I know the, the sins, I know the ones I'm battling. Now, does that mean we're going to be a perfect live a perfect life? No. Does that mean we're going to be able to give up our shirt? No perfect people allowed. No. I don't think so. But we're making that decision. We're making that decision. And I way we can, you know, and, and so anyhow, the godly person will seek to abandon them, blah, blah, blah. Uh, God wants his own will to be done and to be glorified. A godly person like will likewise want God's will to be done and to glorify God in everything he or she does. Now, if we have these feelings, attitudes, and heart's desires, we will soon find ourselves being quite different from the world we live in. And we will soon find ourselves coming into conflict with the world on many occasions and many times. So as, as you can see, being godly is not an easy thing. And it's not. But man, I'll tell you, sign me up, I'm in. And I'm starting. And I'm trying. And I'm recognizing my flaws. And, you know, and, uh, uh, so I'm prayerful that you guys will dwell on that, think about that, study that, and make a godly decision. Would you include that on the next session's paper since you're ending up the next session? This one? Sure. I'll be happy to. Um, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father. We thank you so much that you love us so much. As we openly admit it tonight, Lord, in your house, we're not deserving. Probably if there's not a say, well, at least they're honest. But Father, we want to make a decision. We want to ask for your help because we can't do it without you. I am weak, but thou art strong. And Lord, we know that tonight that we, we want to draw a line in the sand and say, tonight I make the decision. I'm selling out. What am I fearful of holding back? What has Satan got on us for that is holding us back from making that godly, holy decision of saying, I want to be a holy person. I want to love the agape love only that you can give me through the fruit of the wonderful and beautiful spirit. <clears throat> What's holding us back, Lord? And I'm going to ask for everybody prays about that, thinks about that. And you know what, Father? Give them the confidence that you are not going to fail them, that you're not going to hurt them. There's so many scriptures that we can we can quote Jeremiah 29, 11. We can go on and on. The one I claim is Philippians 4, 13. I can do anything and all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. So we know where our weaknesses are. But I'm going to lift my hand in the air and I know that Christ is going to take a hold of it and he's going to say, look, you can't do it without me and I can't do it without you. So we're together. So Father, we just ask that you go before us this week. We once again lift up all of our troops. We lift up all of our veterans. 
we lift off all of the families who are going to be going to a grave site this week.